Good morning and welcome to Thursday Morning Prayers. And it's good to have you here with us this morning. And I see that our dear Jan has logged in. And for those who've not logged in, you're welcome. So we're going to light a candle this morning and we're going to dedicate our morning prayers for a very, very special request. And that is for our dear friend Elsie, a dear friend of the community, well, a member of the community, but whose daughter Jane is in hospital today for some serious tests under general anaesthetic. And Jane has been unwell now for over 12 months. And we pray for Jane. So we light this light in the presence of a loving Father, Mother God, who creates all life in the presence of Jesus, the Cosmic Christ, who also loves life, and for the Holy Spirit, who is the fire of life, and in the presence of all the archangels, angels, spiritual teachers of all faiths, in the presence of all our ascended masters, the angels and archangels, we welcome you to this table of love. Amen. And so we begin. We begin with our Thursday morning prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai. We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother, and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. That's you and me. The moment we surrender our hearts to the Divine Presence, we become, yes we do, the Brotherhood and Sisterhood of the Elect. Thursday morning we commune with the Angel of Water. Hello, she's raining. Yes, she is. Saying, Angel of Water, enter my blood and give the water of life to my whole body. As you say this, you contemplate the waters of earth in rain, rivers, lakes, seas, or anywhere, excuse me, where the angel of water is left intensifying and directing the circulation of the blood. So angel of water, dispense with your waters across the whole earth, especially in areas where there is severe drought. And we thank you for that. So, coming to our book for morning prayer from the Office of Lords, we read the beautiful hymn for Advent. The co-eternal Son, a maiden's offspring see, a servant's form Christ putteth on to set his people free. Daughter of Sion, rise to greet thine infant king, nor let thy stubborn heart despise the pardon he doth bring, that deeds of darkness fly before the approaching morn, for unto sin tis ours to die and serve the virgin born. Our joyful praises sing to Christ that set us free, like tribute to the Father, Mother bring, and Holy Spirit to thee. And now, we invite the Holy Spirit of God to choose a reading for us after we say the beautiful opening prayer and thanksgiving from our brothers and sisters from Iona. So bear with me. O loving Christ, who died upon the tree of life, each day and each night we remember your love. In our lying down, in, the, in our rising up, in life and in death, you are our health and you are our peace. Each day and each night we remember your forgiveness bestowed upon us so gently and generously. And each day and each night may we be fuller in love with you. Amen. And now... Our psalm is from a modern version of the psalms called Psalms Now, and we're going to open it at random, thanking the Spirit of God for speaking to our hearts. Psalm 108. 
My heart is glad today, O God, and I am determined to serve you. I celebrate your presence. I glory in your love for me. I sing your praises and yearn to proclaim your loving concern to all. The people I travel with have little feeling for you. They act as if you do not exist. They are empty, their lives have little meaning or purpose. They bounce about like a vacuum. The deepest longings of their hearts unfulfilled. I know to whom I belong and I know where I am going. I know that you are my Lord and that you will accompany me. As I walk the streets of the city and mingle with its groping inhabitants, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will use me, that through my fumbling efforts, you will touch some soul with healing and love. My heart is glad today, O oh God, grant that I may communicate to others some measure of this eternal joy. That is a lovely psalm. Mm. <clears throat> and coming <clears throat> to our little book, the UCB, we read for this Thursday, the theme is the hardest thing you'll ever do. And they take the reflection from St. Paul's letter to the Philippines, chapter 2, verse 7. Jesus made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. The hardest thing you'll ever do is to put others first and yourself second, because we intuitively look out for ourselves. Self-preservation is man's first instinct, but it doesn't work. Do you know how two goats respond when they meet on a narrow path above a river? They can't turn back and they can't pass each other because they lack even an inch of spare room. The goats instinctively know that if they butt each other, they'll both fall into the river and drown. So how do they handle it? Nature has taught one goat to lie down so the other can pass over it. I never knew that. That's amazing. And as a result, both animals survive and arrive at their destination safe and sound. Instead of seeing itself as a doormat to be walked on, the goat sees itself as a bridge to be crossed over. So it becomes a win-win. The Bible says Jesus made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And to that, sorry, and to, and to do that, you must focus on other people's needs instead of your own rights. President Calvin Coolidge once said, no enterprise can exist for itself alone. It ministers to some great need. It performs some great service, not for itself, but for others. Or failing therein, it ceases to be profitable and ceases to exist. And what's true for any organization or business operation? Sorry, and what's true, okay. And what's true for any organization or business operation is you sacrifice in order to serve someone. Wow. You're sowing seeds of blessing you will surely reap. But we live in a world, don't we, of me, 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 me. Takers. Society to today, I'm sure, is similar to what Jesus experienced 2,000 years ago. But today we have the added advantage of technology. We can communicate to anybody in the world in the speed of, an ins of a second, a nanosecond. 
But despite all our technology, despite the iPhone, the iPad, the internet, our plasma TV screens that almost bring the world into our living room, are we the wiser, the more gentle, the more loving and self-serving? I think we've become a nation of meanies, of meanies, people who focus only on their own need and don't really give tuppence for those who are struggling. Many today have become immune to the horrors of war in Syria. Oh, we've seen that. Even when there's a famine appeal for Ethiopia or the Sudan, oh, it's tragic, isn't it? That we've become so complacent. And so it is in the monastic life. And for those who don't live the life as a monk, but who are spiritual individuals, we all can become complacent and God can be taken for granted. So we sometimes need the knocks in life to bring us back on course and that is tragedy, that we need a knock, a setback, a disappointment to bring us back on course. But the one beautiful thing is on this journey Whatever we offer up as a little sacrifice to God, whatever good we put out into the universe, whatever blessing we share with others, and when we put others first, that blessing comes back a hundredfold. But a lot of people don't see that. All they see is uno ono, self. So as we gather around this table, we are mindful that we are in service to a loving God, a God who is magnanimously generous, who gives, who shares, who bestows. And the moment we surrender our heart to that love, we're not giving control away, as many think we do. What we're doing is we're actually inviting the Creator who formed you and me in the womb of God and who breathed the very breath of life into our soul, into our mind and body. So we become one and not splinter groups like what's happening today. I'm guided to pick up this little book, Jesus Calling, a strong heart response to pick it up and read what Jesus is saying. But it's not for the 22nd, it's for the 20th of December. So let's see what the message is from Christ. When I joined the ranks of humanity, born into the humblest conditions, my glory was hidden from all but a few people. Occasionally, streaks of glory shone out of me, especially when I began to do miracles. Toward the end of my life, I was taunted, I was tempted to display more of my awesome power than my Father Mother God's plan permitted. I could have called down legions of angels to rescue me at any point at any time. Imagine the self-control required of a martyr who could free himself at will. All of this was necessary to provide the relationship with me that you now enjoy. Let your life become a praise song to me by proclaiming my glorious presence in the world. Oh, wow. And you and I are doing that right now. We're actually proclaiming God's presence to the world by being here. When we remember all of God's children, not just Christians, but all of God's children and coming 
to the office. We have a short reading for Thursday morning. And again, it's from Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 8. <clears throat> Rain righteousness, you heavens, let the skies above pour down, let the earth open to receive it, that it may bear the fruit of salvation with righteousness in blossom at its side. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the short response read, <clears throat> The glory of the Lord will shine on you, Jerusalem. The glory of the Lord will shine on you, Jerusalem. His glory will appear in your midst. The glory of the Lord will shine on you, Jerusalem. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God. The glory of the Lord will shine on you, Jerusalem. And the Benedictus Antiphon, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the babe in my womb leapt for joy. Oh, beautiful. And when you hear the voice of Christ speaking to you, when you're going through a pretty horrendous experience, and you become overwhelmed by the presence of God holding you, you feel the Spirit of God leap for joy because you know that you're loved as a child of God. The Benedictus, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and he has redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty savior in the house of David his servant, as he promised through his prophets from of old, a savior who would free us from our sin, from the hands of all our enemies. So his love for our father is revealed and his holy covenant remembered. He swore to Abraham, our father, to grant us that free from fear and save, <coughs> oh, excuse me, and save from the hands of our enemies. And as for you, little child, you shall be called the prophet of God, the Most High. You shall go before the Lord to prepare his ways before him, to make known to his people their salvation through forgiveness of their sin and the loving kindness of the heart of our God, who visits us like the dawn from on high, and he will give light to those who sit in darkness and those who dwell in the shadow of death. He will guide them to the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now we repeat the Benedictus Antiphon. <clears throat> when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the babe in my womb leapt for joy. And now for our intercessions. In a world divided by fear and greed, the church calls again on her Saviour, response, Lord Jesus, come to us in love. Help us to set our hearts where they will find fulfillment and not betrayal. Response, Lord Jesus, come to us in love. As we proclaim your saving power to others, let us not ourselves lose hold of your salvation. Response, Lord Jesus, come to us in love. May our world be flooded with the grace of your coming. Let us experience the fullness of your joy. Response, Lord Jesus, come to us in love. May we live our lives to the full in this world and transfigure it with hope of future glory. 
response, Lord Jesus, come to us in love. And coming to the little book of Celtic prayers, there are a few intercessions. Life be in my speech, truth in what I say. The love Christ Jesus gave be filling every heart for me. The love Christ Jesus gave be filling me for everyone. Now let us pray for this coming day and to follow Christ more closely. So let us now just spend this moment in quiet contemplation, being aware that Jesus is present and that he's inviting you to share with him whatever may be ailing your heart. So let us just be still. We praise you, God. This morning when we began prayer, we offered our prayers for Jane, that's Elsie's daughter, who has been struggling. And we just call on the Lord Christ, the physician of our soul, to lay his healing hands on Jane today and all the family who are affected. We ask the Lord Christ to bless you, dear Jan, and your husband John and all the family, and that you have a blessed Christmas. For all here not logged in, we ask the Lord Christ to bless you we pray today for our beautiful world, the Cathedral of God that has been torn apart by man's inhumanity to mankind. We pray today for those affected by the bombing in Berlin day before yesterday. We pray for terrorists that they stop for a moment and in their stopping that the Spirit of God will touch them, zap them to come back to their heart and that they end their atrocities and stop using young children as living bombs. We pray for the whole family of God. We pray for the children of Abraham, Jew, Muslim and Christian, that they come to the birthplace of their belief and the heart chakra of the world, Jerusalem, and ask forgiveness for our historical woundedness to one another, that we draw a line in the sand and that we go forward with the breastplate of love and where we embrace the divine feminine energy of God. Because currently what we're feeling in the world are masculine energies that are destructive. We need the feminine energy of God and all the great feminine teachers of God, Magdalena, Isis, Athena, Portia, Gaia, Kuan Yin, and Tara. We pray today for the children of God who are struggling, really struggling, and those who've lost their faith in God, those who've been abused or are being abused today by men and women of God and by pedophiles. We pray for those who are on death row, for those in our prisons, men, women, and young adults, and those who care for them. And with Jan, we hold all here, all in need of healing, and yes, for Jane, and for peace in the world. We pray for my dear friend and neighbor, Kathy, who's now blind in both eyes through a side effect to medication a truly brave soul. It must be really hard to lose your sight when you're in your 60s, having had years of admiring the beauty of creation 
it must be a real trial. So we send her love because she only brings love. Bless her heart. But we pray for those who are homeless and unemployed, for those in the poverty trap, and for those who are too proud to pray and ask for help. So let us now remember our religious leaders, <clears throat> His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Thich Nhat Hanh, and our Holy Father Pope Francis, with Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, who is the reigning monarch of our land and the head of the Church of England. But we pray for Her Majesty and the Duke of Edinburgh, who are both feeling unwell at this moment and have had to delay their holiday at Sandringham for Christmas to be with family. We pray today that the Lord Christ will touch both of them and that they'll be able to travel to Sandringham either today or tomorrow. <clears throat> and for all here we pray. Let us be still. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our disobedience, our apathy, our selfishness. And for being a part of the takers community who take all and give nothing. For those who moan and groan about the price of fish, figuratively speaking. Lead us not astray, but protect us from the forces of violence, negativity, despair, and evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And I'm going to, if I may, <coughs> ah, I'm guided to pick up the booklet on interfaith prayers and I'm guided to open it. Ah, a Jane prayer for universal friendship at this time of year. I grant forgiveness to all living beings. May all living beings grant me forgiveness. My friendship is with all living beings. I have no animosity toward any living beings. And the universal benediction. Praise to the spiritual victors. Praise to the liberated souls. Praise to the spiritual leaders and spiritual teachers and praise to all the saints in the world who practice non-violence and reverence for all life in action and pluralistic viewpoint in their thinking. These five salutations are capable of destroying all the sins. This is the first happiness among all forms of happiness. May the entire universe be blissful. May all beings be engaged in each other's well-being. May all weakness, sickness and faults vanish. May everyone be healthy, peaceful and blissful everywhere. Wow, that is a beautiful se series of prayers. So now go in peace to love and to serve our loving Father, Mother God. Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Pax et Bonum, Om Shanti, Solo di Carita, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of all that is sacred to you reawaken in your heart that you are a beloved of God, that you are a child redeemed by God's love. If this is your bedtime, Sleep well, and if you're beginning your day, like Jan and myself, have a peaceful day. And now, as I blow out this flame, we blow healing to Jane and to all here, and to all whom we have remembered in prayer. Amen. 
So my dear friends, I wish you a blessed day. And I look forward to your company again soon. But for now, every blessing, every blessing, God bless.